Good evening. I'm Dean Anson. Welcome to the City of Laconia Conservation Commission meeting for Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. We're going to have a roll call. Bob Harrington. Deb Williams. Mike Foote. Sarah Gabriel. And we have two guests. We have Jessica Bailey. Oh, good evening, lady. We're we're doing roll call. Nice. Right on time. Right on. <laughs> okay, so we start off the meeting with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Okay, so we're going to we're going to change the uh, agenda, and we're going to start off with the wetland CUP for Race Point. Good evening, I'm Attorney uh, Phil Bruyard here for the Vizina Trust uh, with Jessica Bailey, um, our, our wetlands expert. Um, this is a wetland CUP um, of a lot. Um, that uh, has been uh, sort of a, a whipping boy for everybody else in the neighborhood's uh, drainage. Um, and uh, what we're proposing to do is um, uh, to, uh, there's basic, I got ones. yeah, no, but there's no, they've, they've all got them on their computers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, basically on the, the first, uh, oh, oh, basically, yeah, this uh, lot has okay. oh, you, oh, I got it. no <laughs> land that's not in within the 50-foot setback uh, from wetlands. Zero. Zero point zero zero zero. And, of course, this is where the when the lot was created, the wetlands buffer was 30 feet. Now it's 50 feet, so everything is in the buffer. Um, on the uh, second page... Um, our proposal is to uh, seek a variance after we get your input and push the house five feet into the setback to maintain five foot more distance from the wetlands so that we maintain <laughs> the 30 feet um, all the way around. I'm gonna have to learn and we're proposing a very small modest home, uh, a couple thousand square feet. Um, it's going to have a main level and an upper story and a one-car garage and a shed. Um, and then we've proposed uh, extensive uh, details as far as construction techniques and also um, uh, wetlands uh, things to preserve the wetlands that uh, Jessica is going to talk about that are detailed on the third sheet of the plans um, and also on the um, application itself she did a very extensive um, write-up as to what we were doing uh, and and why um, and uh, the, the lot is actually um, quite flat just, it's, it's the last undeveloped lot on 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 Race Point, um, and and Jessica is going to talk about one of the markings that we have. We we found a, uh, a a lady that makes these in Massachusetts, and we want to make sure they're okay with you. And we would order these and put these along the wetlands, and we've given you a color copy of these little wetlands marks. So I would like to now hand it over to Jessica, who's going to describe the um, methodologies we've done to try to preserve the uh, wetlands. 
So if you recall Drummer Trail, this particular project is very much exactly the same. Very limited, contiguous upland buildable space <laughs> with a lot that has been inundated by a wetland. Mm, oh, okay, yo. Yeah. So on the third sheet, just like Drummer Trail, I have proposed a rain garden at the edge, along the edge of the wetland boundary, between the wetland boundary and the proposed new structure. I should have brought more notes. I thought I had some. You have these the beautiful notes here. Oh yeah, these are good. And they're, they're all in their packages. So part of the application package, I, I've answered these questions, and, and I think it really does detail exactly how the proposal fits the meaning and intent of the wetland boundary and having the wetland boundary and the need and, and why it all it became a regulation. The proposal is to incorporate a design of a rain garden along the transitional edge. This rain garden is going to be 82 and a half feet long, two feet wide. And it can hold a total square footage of 165 square feet. The vegetation that has been selected have all been <coughs> plants that are indicated on the wetland indicator status. They're facultative, obligate, and facultative wetland positive plants. They'll be able to have saturated roots produce flowers and berries for songbirds, flowers for pollinating insects. It's backyard conservation textbook. <laughs> I don't know if, if you have any specific questions, it might be better for me to answer specific questions than to just try to. Why don't you just go through the criteria then? Did you, did you do that? Well, I, I read a little blurb of it, but I don't know if you've had time to read it. And if you haven't had time to read it, I'm happy to walk you through the different questions. Sure, I'd take his presentation. I'm sorry, what? I'll, I'll take a presentation. Okay. So the first question was to present our project to ensure the protection of the wetland resources. And as I've stated, the proposal is to do a rain garden along the transitional edge of the boundary to future residential home, overall wetland health. The proposed rain garden is a total of 82 and a half linear feet and two feet wide for a total of 160 square feet. The area is to absorb but not limited to stormwater infiltration from the proposed home, roof runoff, applications from yard and grass amendments the rain garden will naturally take care of nutrient removal, sediment, and toxin retention, many of the functions and values associated and outlined in the Army Corps Highway Methodology Workbook. The proposed rain garden with its suggested plants meets common practices associated with backyard conservation providing fruit and seed trees and shrubs for birds and small animals to consume and flowering shrubs for pollinators. This proposal minimizes the degradation or loss of wetlands or the wetland buffer. This pr proposal is actually a wetland buffer enhancement. Right now there is no vegetation along the wetland edge and there will be a future home and everything there. So it's a wetland buffer enhancement. So we are, in practice, fortifying it. Uh, the location of the proposed buffer planting was selected because it does not impact the wetland and it mitigates a buffer zone that is practice and feasible post-construction. The proposal, which has incorporated the design and implementation of a rain garden along with the transitional boundary, the proposal allows for temporary storage of 83 cubic feet of storm water to be absorbed naturally into the ground. For what we're trying to do, there is absolutely no other 
feasible or practical location on the lot. The lot was constructed to be a buildable lot. It's not meeting those at the moment because of its confinements and configuration. But I think we have provided a very reasonable solution. There's no state or federal permits necessary. And also, Jessica, I was wondering if you could discuss the, the uh, core log that we're gonna have uh, along there to help uh, during the construction and well, actually it'll, it'll actually much like Drummer Trail, we don't want to have any temporary sediment or erosion control devices. The use of a choir log is a permanent sediment and erosion control device because you leave it in place. It allows to filter. It, oh, it allows okay. to be have a little more water retention in the basin, and it will provide additional nutrients and acts as a nurse log over time. Because it's made of coconut fibers, it's, there's no impact negatively towards the environment. And it has a very, it has about a 20 year lifespan before it's completely decomposed to a fibric or hemic state. That's pretty much our proposal. Uh, we would like to answer any questions you might have. So this wetland study was done in 2019, is that correct? I completed the delineation back in 2019, yes. Do you see any changes in the property since then? Have you been out to look at it or? Well, it's snow covered right now. Obviously. <laughs> But I mean, if there's more drainage in there, if the wetlands have changed. If you look at your existing or proposed conditions plan, you will notice that there is a catch basin in the lower southeast corner of that wetland. At my professional opinion, I think over time, as growth has expanded around this undeveloped lot, stormwater and everything has been directed towards this lot it, and this wetland has been expanded and impounded. I highly doubt that that catch basin has been maintained. It was covered by vegetation up to my knees. I found it because I was hanging a flag next to it. <laughs> and these are current photos of it. It's rather flat lot. It's yeah. not a ravine or anything. Uh, and, and so, um, I went out and took those photos. Um, there's nothing very remarkable about the lot, except that it, it's accepting water from, from many sources. So is your building gonna have a basement or is it on a slab? No, it's probably gonna have a crawl space. It's gonna be located in the, uh, along the, along the, the extreme side, uh, the extreme side line um, as you're facing the lot on the right and so half slab half crawl space is that what you're saying yes because there's a garage there too and i just worry you know if you have any kind of basement or crawl space if that water is no no we won't continued. we don't want to have water in the basement so we, we wouldn't have that here um but we are um we are crowding that um and that uh area is where the only um area that is out of within the 30 foot setback is on the lot. So we're, we're honoring that setback to the best that we can. And then we're trying to improve the wetlands and, and maintain the buffer uh, 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 as we've described uh, previously. So is it wet where you're proposing your house? When you no. said there was no, no okay. No, no it's our just house is, it, only, is located in the only contiguous upland. Okay. But it's is your, still within 50 feet of the wetland though. Right. So that's why we need right. a CEP. Yeah. Is your abutter on that close side, are they okay with well, the we plans? Could. It's Ferncroft Condominium Association, and I think they may be a contributing factor towards the water loading. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> and, but and I well, mean, I, well, to answer your question, uh, we met with staff, and, uh, and basically we detailed this proposal. 
And they said our first step was to come to you. And then our second step is to incorporate any suggestions or ideas that you have and apply to the ZBA for a variance to encroach on the setback five feet so we can stay away from right. wetlands for you guys. Right. Uh, and, and also for the, the, the health and, and benefit of the wetlands. And then they'll be notified when that time comes. And they'll also be notified for the CUP at the planning board. But we can't go to the planning board until we get the variance because of the proposal. So we're, we're systematically visiting all the boards. Gotcha. Uh, and to answer your question, we, we don't know. And the best way to find out is to, um, you know, uh, when they get the, the notification, they'll, they'll be able to respond. Under table two for di dimensional regulations, you have a sideline and rear setback of 10 feet. And the closest building corner in Ferncroft to the shared sideline is 39.7 feet away. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I realized it was far enough away. I just, you're so you're close to that boundary. Well, so. it, it, they, 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 I didn't they, know what they, 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 they may have an issue with it. And then the, whichever board is weighing the issue will have to decide whether their, their, um, their objection is, I just hate to see you do all this work and then. Well, well, we'll, well that's our job. That's our job. <laughs> but we, we, we're trying to make, put forward the best possible plan, what we can for the wetland, for the area. And, and actually by doing that, it's, it's to benefit of those people and the, and the condo as well, because there's a buildable lot there and I'm sure that they want to see it developed in an, an environmentally sensitive way with full permitting and full disclosure and full, full everything of all the town boards so that when it does happen, it ha happens properly and things are done right. I'm sorry, and could you um, familiarize myself where this race point is? Yes, Mike, uh, I don't know if it's possible for you to go to some of these maps that we have supplied. Uh, this, is, uh, this is in South Down Shores. Right. Uh, it's next to the Ferncroft Village. Um, it's one of the, it's, this is a tax map uh, showing the actual uh, lot. Uh, it's in, in the quote unquote older part of South Down Shores where there's, there's more uh, homes. In fact, Mike, you can tell that these roads are kind of old because they've got all these you know, cracks in them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it's, it's in an older quote unquote section of South Down Shores that has been developed um, and lived in for a long time. This is kind of the orphan black sheep lot that's been the whipping boy and pool uh, at water storage facility yeah. for all these giant homes that are located around there. It's off of Admiral's Lane, oh, okay. which is off of Davidson. Gotcha. Hey, hey. Okay, um, thank you. So, th so it is pretty close to the lake. It's not. No, oh, okay. it, it goes up. Got you. So what is this? This lot number nine? Mm -hmm. Yes. 24295. There's no um, uh, number, 911 number, number on it, Mike, because there's no, good. No, no, no building. Who's the abutter? Uh, Wainwright. They would have a physical address. Yep, it's good. I, yeah. I'm there. Thank you. Yeah, that thing is. It would be on the abutters list. Yeah, it is on the abutters list, and I have the abutters list. So. Sure. On uh, page two, do you have the shed on there? Yes. It's not on my particular plan, but we did add a shed. Who's that map you use? No, 16 race point. So it would probably be like 18 race point, Mike. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, um, how much total impact overall on the wetlands? Well, we're not in We're the not wetlands. impacting that's, the that's wetlands at all. We're not, that's what we're, we're not. I mean, impacting the wetlands. The 165 square feet. Yeah. Oh, well, that's no. the rain garden. I don't no. know how much of the house is in the, the buffer. The, the, we the have total, that answer. It's 1,727 square feet. 
Um, and just to put that a little of that in perspective, okay. The, the, the lot is 22,143 square feet. It is all within 50 feet of the wetlands buffer. Uh, the area of the land occupied by the wetland is 15,732.5 square feet. So that's about 70% of the lot. Mm. So the land that we're proposing to develop and where the house and around the house is, is 1,727 square feet. And the, and the building, okay, the footprint of the building is like 1,154 square feet. No, the no. shed is another 80 square feet. And, and where is the shed going? It's, um, if you look at uh, your... The southeast corner of the property. It's, it's basically just by the garage. southwest of that catch basin. It's an 8 by 10 shed. So in relation to the garage, where is it? Oh, it's on the other side of the it's lot. It's on the other side. It was... It's in the way. It was no. It's there's another little. There's a little area. A little area. Six hundred and thirty-four square feet of upland. That's inside the wetland buffer. But n but not within but not within the thirty foot right. foot buffer. Right. And we're putting that shed as far away from the wetland as possible. It's it's all the way as close to the edge as we can, closest to the road. <coughs> And you said the shed is to the southeast of the garage? Yes. Southeast of the lot. It's, it's just it's at the point of hatch. tangent for the cul-de-sac. It's right by the what? The point of tangent where it starts to curve? It's, it's, it's so it's here. Right here. Um, okay. So this is all part of the lot. That's okay, do you have it on maybe your... Maybe it's here. Do you have it this on your part. drawing? This is there. Yeah. Well, no, I, no. I don't have it on my big one, but if you have a pencil, I can draw, sketch it on and it's easy yeah. to. That would be great, because I, I can't see it on this. It's right here. It's, oh, in okay. this, it's in this area. OK, OK. So, so how are they going to? So they're, in order to get to their shed, they're going to go out here, down here, to here, yep. or they're going to yeah, come this right. way. Right. Yeah, right. And this is the catch basin you're talking about. Or, or Correct. We'll go across the wetland. <laughs> oh, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I thought this was the property, just that. Oh. But it's, so what, what, what is the actual? Oh. Ah, that's oh, a good size oh, cut oh. piece of yeah. ground there. Yeah. Mostly wet. No. 22,143 square feet. Oh, now I get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Should have brought a marker. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> nope. Is that better for you? Yeah, that was... Okay, so now I, now I better understand. I thought that this was... Yeah, that's what we're showing. That's the only contiguous upland big enough to support the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. This this is up. This is up. Right. And that maintains the setback. We don't need a variance for that. It's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. we're just pulling this over so we can give this buffer, make this buffer larger. And okay. and this is where your rain garden is going to be along that edge. The rain garden goes here. Yep. And on the other side, There's where it is. There's a lot of area that drains into they, that wetland. It's going to leave it as is. It's more like the, big, the biggest reason why I selected the farthest corner over on the opposite side yeah. for the shed but, but, but is to maintain surface, as much of the original drainage. and existing yeah, yeah. vegetation yeah. currently. It's an eight foot by ten foot shed. No, no, no. I mean, I'm talking about this part of the property. They're just going to leave wetland. it as, yeah. You just, can't go in there. Right. It's just going to. That's why we have the tags. Yeah. That's why okay, we have so, these tags. Okay, so this. Keep out. To keep out. <laughs> <laughs> so this line continues yeah. down here. Doesn't it really yes, because this is the radius around the cul-de-sac. And we okay. would like a 
cool from you guys on this because we're gonna order some. Make sure we have to order it from a company in Massachusetts. Keep it was Dean Treffrey's idea. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised so. it doesn't say two bags. Okay, so. I mean, I'm very generic. Looks, I, looks the so smallest good. order I can make is a hundred, and I'm only gonna need like 40, 45. So for me to absorb the cost, I need to be able to use them somewhere else too. And that's the honest truth. Right. Got it. Yeah, I got it on tape. Okay. <laughs> it looks it looks about like uh, in design. But it's a wetland boundary. Yeah. Well, and yeah. somewhere in here, or somewhere, it they're going to get catch wind, right? but they can't go yeah. past it. Yeah. Well, I've got some things like that to say. Conservation land water on my on my, trees, on yeah. my yeah. ex property. Yeah. But I, I made them I made them generic. Yeah. I did, yeah, and yeah. and if and that's the and that's the point of the discussion right now. If there's different words, I can. This is just a proof. Yeah. So if there's a different word that you would like, as long as we can make it generic, yeah. we can change the wording. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. Shouldn't be yeah. with so yeah. that shed is probably going. Okay, so there's a house here. It can't be way away because you know, this is Ferncroft. Yeah, yeah. Ferncroft. And there's another hmm. condo development it's back here. Here. Right. 821. And you can see by the topography the drainage coming in. It does go out. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where, where does the water, going, yeah. where do, when mm -hmm. the water comes in here, where does it flow to? Just go down into the ground or is it? I wasn't there for, you know, a neighborhood study. Right. But it definitely kept going, and that's probably clogged. I was looking on the Registry of Deeds and some a lot of plans and references that I found in regards to Grace Point and Ferncroft all go back to 1987 when it was going through the thousands and thousands of expansions and phases and process of the subdivision and the plants that I had looked at and observed and, and witnessed, none of them showed our lot wetland and the, it showed this catch basin and it showed another one over in this general area but when I was there back in 2019, it was obviously covered by snow. Or something was obscuring it from my Observation. ability to witness. So there's no standing water here? No. Th oh yeah, your feet will get wet. When, in 2019, there's, it'll be soggy. Well, not right now. Yeah. It's probably still taking up. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably level c comes and goes. Well, it does. Yeah. 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 I'm sure but in the spring. The, uh, there's a lot of dieback. There's a lot of dead trees, and I and I recall that because they're species that are not capable but of having a prolonged yeah. duration in saturated soils. Yeah. Yeah. This got wet as its life. As this, it. This got wet as, it, as the area got developed. Right, yeah, right, right, right. It's it's sort of a man-made wetland. Yes. Yeah. It, and with weird. the and with that catch basin not being main, and I my biggest directive when I started this search was to find out who was responsible of that catch basin mm -hmm. because it wasn't being maintained. But back in 1987, you also didn't have maintenance schedules. Mm -mm. Yeah. You know, so. And I, again, I stepped on that by accident. <laughs> but it also tells me that it was never wet before. Yeah. Because they put a catch basin there for storm water. Yeah. So was the catch basin at grade or is it elevated? Oh, it was at grade. I okay. stepped so on the grade. No, yeah. yeah. um, yeah. The PVC pipe that's going into your rain garden, where is that coming from? Oh, that's a standard um, block, and I didn't catch it. But when you do put a PVC pipe into a rain garden, it's to help facilitate drainage from 
like a infiltration trench, so it gets directed straight towards the rain garden for infiltration and but, sediment. But is that what you're planning? You're planning pipes? It can be there, rain. and it doesn't have to be there. But it is a standard block, and it's from an infiltration trench or from roof line gutters. Or if you have a I gutter system and a downspout, and you if you go into a French drain, right. that's how they all would connect. Right. I just didn't know that's what you were planning. And maybe you don't either. <laughs> you don't know for the house or if not. I, I think the house right now is pretty general because we shouldn't put so much time and effort into things if it's going to get changed. And that's why we're here to talk to you about how does it best fit the, the needs and efforts of protecting the, the wetland and allowing the lot to be used and developed as it's been being taxed? What, the, the owners, where do the owners live? Just going to be a full-time residence or is this just their summer place? Nope, they are building it to allow some other lucky homeowner, I believe. Oh, so sick. So they're going to flip it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so let me tell you what, I have several issues here, or concerns. Okay, let me go get my, I might need a new pen. Can you, no. One, one of them is, this is a homeowner association. I used to live in Southdown. I used to live in Long Bay, at different times, of course. Right. But, if you're going to build this, People typically do not follow the rules and regulations because the homeowners association doesn't enforce them. I can say you're wrong. We just did Western Terrace, which is a brand new subdivision. We just did. Where's the Western Terrace? So when you're coming in, what is the, the main road called? Outer Bridge. When you're coming into Outer Bridge and the yeah, big that. gigantic bridge as you head out towards the the tennis courts and such mm -hmm. western terrace is on the the right hand side and darwin's place is on the right hand side it was a two phase subdivision both phases contained three houses and those people have been getting pinched left and right, and I've been there every other week doing an as-built the whole way, including as-built for the roads, the, the sewer, the houses, the electrical, the underground storage, propane tanks. So whoever's running it now is on top of it. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things I think we should have in our comments is you have to maintain the catch basin. I don't think it's theirs. It would be the responsibility of South Down because it's a part of the road. Right. If, if I, we I don't think if we, we can tell, put that speculation in, even though I wish we could. I, I really do. It is a part of the problem that we're trying to It's on their property. It's on their property. They bought the property, they own it. My attitude. I may okay. be totally wrong. Is that what the catch basin is? Is this little thing right here? That little square oh, with yeah, the yeah, grates. Yeah, yeah, all right. But the problem is... And yeah, no, is that a part of the design? Is that part of... Uh, no, Dean, it's not. It's, it's completely... It's existing. But it's not a part of their lot. You said this is the whole lot, and this is the catch basin. This is, you said this was the whole Yeah. Lot. So this is the catch this basin? This is, this is, I, I'm just trying, I'm getting myself together. Yep. That's the setback from the edge of the road. Yep. But it's still, but that's the right of way. That's, that's the, um, the yeah. setback from the frontage of the road, just like anything. That, whose responsibility is it to maintain the ditch or a culvert on a town road? Or it's New Hampshire DOT even though your land goes to the center line of that public road. It's not their responsibility. It's yeah. the, the responsibility it's the private, of the municipality. It's the private, private roads of South Down, and those are, are, that's what they pay the dues to maintain the roads for. Yeah. Can I suggest that our old Dr. Davis would be going past South Down in that vehicle and pull stuff at right. some point? Right, right. 
so let's let's put it in that the catch basin needs to be maintained. And I'll, yeah, I'll cleaned out, maintained so that the surface waters can flow into it and out of it. Well, whoever is the responsible I, party. I, I can't find anything, so. I think that's a great idea. I mean, and I don't know, they must maintain their other catch basins that. And, and I think just over time, it fell right. off the. Right. Radar. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that happens. I mean, I'm not. I'm not pointing my finger at them. Right. No. 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 Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. scolding them. I mean, this is this is not the first time I've seen this kind of a situation right. that's not being maintained. So, okay. Um, so the 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 surface water is or the um, the water is essentially at the surface, depending on how wet it is at any particular time of year. It could be. It could be very much seasonally flooded and or saturated. Okay. Okay. So I think what we ought to do is we ought to put language in that says that the uh, homeowner may not fill in the wetland. Well, that's what the tags are. I know that. And again, we can change the I, verbiage. I, I put, I put. I could put that in the deed, the deed restriction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because those kinds Bigger of things question. should not be on the plan. They'll never look at the plan. Yeah, yeah. They'll you sign know what? the deed. <laughs> but I, I can put it in the deed. You, you sign the contract, you own the contract. Right. You're gonna Whether you read it or not. Okay, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So from where you're placing your house here and then where the storage shed is going to be, is that where their lawnmower is going to go back from the storage shed? Is there going to be a little trail through there? There's how, no trail. There's no more. There's no impact. How are they going to get into their storage shed? They're going to have to walk on the side of the road. Okay, that's what I'm asking. We've taken, we've taken the shed out and put it back in. The storage shed's going yeah. in. I personally see no value of it, but I'm not the client or future homeowner. I'm here representing. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. I just curious. I think the shed's a terrible idea. Yeah. What? Yeah. what and and that, that increases the impact. Even though marginally here we're going back to the mid 1980s. Well, if it would make you feel better, we could delete the shed so we don't have we to. We can talk remove about the shed and we can add no, no, no accessory structures. They have yeah, a garage. It's, but it's attached to the house. Accessory structure is detached. Uh, okay. But I mean, they have a garage to store stuff. Is that a two story garage? I have no idea. We don't have no idea. We just have a footprint. It, it could be. It could, could be. be. Whatever. It's going to be a two story house, so it could yeah. be a two story garage. I mean, I wasn't allowed to have a shed, and I'm more allowed one. Yeah. Yeah, that almost makes well, certain we, conditions we, like we, that can we be didn't, put into. We, we didn't design it with a shed, and when we Again. gave it to our client, he thought it would be a good idea. But so it, it just seems to be problematic for access and stuff yeah. like that, and certainly as a consideration for um, looking at this project here, it would. Uh, I think it would be better. I agree with you because then there's nothing over that side of right. The, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Do they drain the, do the neighbors drain their pool into that wetland, do you figure? <laughs> I do not know. I, I Curious don't, enough, I don't, though. I don't think so. I think, you know, a lot of these folks have to have the pool water yeah. brought in and everything. So they have to let a certain, well, you know, they might. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my play is as, but I just yeah. noticed. Well, I mean, as I mean, far as, as closeness I mean, I is, they're, they're I, as close. I, I don't know what SOPs are for people that build pools, but there's probably a way to open a valve to let some of the water out of the pool, and you probably wouldn't be putting that in the septic system of the house, I mean, the, yeah. through the... You know, hopefully you wouldn't be putting any chemicals into the wetlands either, so well, hopefully that's a contained unit. Anyways, I digress. Okay, It's so interesting that you bring up the neighbor only because, and I don't have it with me, but I'm sure Phil does, the neighbor had a boundary line adjustment with our subject lot. Because they put their pool in and they didn't measure it right. So it was within the setback. So this poor lot had to give them boundary line adjustments so that their pool would be. Which only made our confinements and restrictions yeah. more stringent. Interesting. Yeah. 
Okay, so if we eliminate the shit, somebody buys it. I buy it. I need a shit. I don't need to get a permit to put a shed in. No, they will. From the they, homeowners, no, no, I ask yes. that they will. First, yeah. they'll need if one from over, South Down. If it's over 150 square feet, that's the city of Laconia's. That's a that's a big shed. I, I asked the deputy planner, and he said you can't have a shed because because it's within the wetland buffer. So you'd have to go through this process all over again to get the shed. That's what I was told. Yep. I was so, so he I said that we should down. put it in this application, so it's part of the application. But if you guys don't want it, we can take it out. Would it be a part of a deed restriction, much like? Well, it could be. Yeah. Putting some, putting yeah. the no weapon buffer, no, well, no, no access, accessory structures, no, no sheds, no accessory structures or sheds. Maintain wetland buffer tags. I mean, whatever, however you yeah. do the words. Yeah. And then it would, it, it would uh, negate the sewer. obvious need to take a little four wheeler back and forth to your shed. Well, to be honest, I agree. I, I agree. I mean, it, it's to be absolutely honest with you, an eight by ten shed is so small. It's so like right. it's you know, yeah. but again, we're here to represent. Yep. No, I, I understand, and we'll be seeing it again. The wishes of Mr. Vizina. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> Mrs. And Vizina. If, if this were a closed community, that, that shed would be uh, well. I think from prime place for somebody to get and I think the steel stuff have from. Problems, right. So right. To be honest with you, you're doing us a favor because I think it'd be less issues going forward. I, I got a question then. Is this South Down proper? Is this a part of one of the condos, one of the sub associations. It's South Down proper. It's one of right. the residential. So it's controlled by the uh, South Town Recreation yes. Committee. And do you have any sense, any feedback, how they feel about this going forward? Well, no, because we haven't. We have. We have to come here first before we can go to the ZBA to get it. But you'd know that before you got to ZBA, right? No. No, we're going to go to the ZBA, and that's when the people will come out of the woodwork because we're going to ask. But I mean, this, I've run into this before in having permission to move forward. We've been in South Town. I hear what you're saying because. For some time, I, and we, what we right learned. Ahead. I go right ahead, and if I know I need a butter concurrence for a wetland application, yeah. I go right through. I, I go get I just, I just know that we. I go and file my. Even though I know I'm still going to mail them a letter of notification. Yeah. Because that's a requirement. No, so what, I hear we, what you're saying. No, it's just that the, when I've, I've been through these with Southdown, and they get notified, and they're very vocal, and they do everything. And, you know, we have to follow our procedure. Right. Our procedure is to see you. Then our procedure is to apply for the variance and incorporate your suggestions into our proposal. And then they have a chance to come in and discuss that. And then uh, if the ZBA uh, grants us our variance, then and you know this is a very unique property and it's got a lot of disabilities um and and th they're going to have a chance to express their opinion and then they'll have their chance to express their opinion at the planning board it's so a way to control well, the process right by and keeping the, things until it's time to yeah the other thing that you're going to have to they're going to have to do is they're going to have to go to the building committee right for south down right. to get approval that's where I'm kind of at. So right af there. after they get there's our a lot of steps after we leave this room, but right. right now we're asking about your approval of proceeding right. because you like the rain garden. <laughs> we understand that there's many steps after. Okay, so so in the in the deed restriction, should we identify this as a rain garden so people don't go and fill it in or yes and no <coughs> mowing mow it or whatever. Yeah. That's for the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is yes. yes okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have an, any idea what uh, effect uh, the development and the rain garden would have on water coming into the, the wetland? There will be a, a, a small percentage of, of it? probably capillary fringe yeah, or rise. Yeah. When, once those so it's not, roots not for the plants that we put in there. change in, in the input into the wetland. No, it will certainly not change yeah. the hydro period. Not where it's going to turn into, not like, yeah, not right. significantly like your concern is 
You saw how to on food tubes. Hey, I was just curious. Yeah, no. Um, Usually when you remove trees, things get wetter. Yeah, right. Since you say there are uh, dead or dying trees in, in the wetland. I absolutely recall a, a, a good yeah. clip of dieback when I was there, even I, I back know. in 2019. What, what sort of, of surface vegetation is, is there now? Well, if I haven't been I, there since I 2019, I I and know. I have tried to look for my field book, and yeah. unfortunately it's on a different There's book. a lot of trees, and then yeah. I took some photos, and it's very dense. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the yeah. trees yeah. have just fallen over, and, yeah. and yeah. so... It's a mess. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it will be better when it's cleaned up, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. But, but, but it's, it's not a but gulch. It's not a very no, healthy no. system right now. No. So, so... Phil, you said you're going to clean it up. What what does that mean? Yeah, he, that was out of context. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant that by putting a house there and, and, and making it look like the rest of the neighborhood, it won't it won't look it, it won't look like neglected the way it is right now. That's what so I mean. the, the, the dead vegetation you're going to leave. It's, oh, it's going to stay. Yeah. That's why That's, it, his comment was out of context because yeah. it sounded like you're going to take the dead trees out. Right. I heard yeah. it too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, could we make a suggestion that uh, any snow removals not be pushed into the wetlands off of the driveway? That is a very valid point, and I don't know how they deal with snow. I know in my small little association, I pay my dues, and they come in with a bobcat and yeah, I don't mm -hmm. blow they it. Do they take it away. Do they plow the snow? Well, they in? blow no. it between me and my neighbor's house. It's got a nice little snow rinrow now. I don't know how they take care of their snow, but it certainly can be requested to, if they do use a bobcat or something like that, to, uh, to go away from yeah, the wetland. Uh, I don't know. I just, I think that if you look at this plan where the T is for the yep, turn around, yep. you'd just be pushing it over here, which is opposite the wetland. Right, we, yeah, would, yeah. Just, we would just yeah, want to right. make sure that yes, that's what they did. Yeah. 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 And not push it the other way. Yeah, they would. They would probably push it over to where it says Race Point Road into this. We'll see. This he's I, I can here. put a deed restriction in that says uh, mm -hmm. any snow removal will not pushed into the wetlands. Yeah, I mean, as the homeowner just has to realize that it's a you know environmentally sensitive yeah. lot, yeah, yeah. and yeah. obviously they're going to know it's it's kind of like a an island. Yeah. <laughs> In well, the wetland, yeah, the, way, yeah, yeah, the way you've got the, the berms the, the and everything. The other, the other thing that I suggested, going back to one other point that was brought up when, uh, when it, uh, about maintaining and not filling in the rain garden, maintaining and not filling in the rain garden, and also maintaining um, the signage, you know, the signs in place too. So. What will the signs be made out of? So actually, I called the town of Alton because they made I us buy some this, I saw years that ago, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so they have. So I taped my proof onto the back of the town of Alton, and these are made out of metal, and they come mm -hmm. with two little pinholes yeah, so they can get tacked to that. the tree. Yeah, yeah that's there's what we have now yeah, for. Yeah, and there's you plenty the of trees to tap into. Boundary there. And if there's the not a tree, easement. we can put easily put it on. What I was thinking, so it doesn't decompose, would be like a four foot or a six foot uh, garden stake. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Does anybody else want to tell me their questions? <laughs> we have we have yellow ones that are for um, conservation easements. Well, they're custom. Designable. You can put whatever words you want on. No, no, no. I, I'm saying we we use the same, exact same thing except they're yellow. Yeah. They're metal. They have two holes. I will let, I will tell you the most. It was asinine trying to find a website that actually was going to do what I wanted it yeah. to do. No, I, I'd seen <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's why I ended up calling the town of Alton and be like, "Can you send me?" Because I can't. Find anything you want to put the note I've, I've seen stuff like that at some that other would kind of um, be good. You know, um, in, in my opinion, um, there's a lot of very large homes in Southtown, but with the cost of building, like this is a smaller, modest home. If you would like, and it's going to have I, an I upstairs and the one car <laughs> garage, and it's 
really all a retired couple or someone that comes up for the weekend actually needs. And it might actually be something they can actually afford to build even with the high cost of building now. Because these large, some of these large homes that were there now, they, they couldn't afford to be built right now because it's just too large. Yeah. So, so I actually think that, and maybe somebody would would appreciate like yeah. having the wetland right there because I, I I'm it's picturing a, you know, a wall of glass looking out into the woods. So it's going to be a very natural experience to be living there. Right. And we're not, this isn't, you know, Mosquito City. This is not a, a swamp. I mean, this is not a, right. a, a horrible place to be, you know what I mean? Um, so. So, is so there Mr. Bouliard, you're not under any restrictions once again, south down on having to build a certain size house to be accepted. Well, it well it will meet their requirements because it's going to have two floors. In it. Right. Is there any chance that this could be, or a portion of this could be a vernal pool? No. Nope. She's One, it doesn't meet any of the criteria because there's a defined inlet and an outlet. Okay. Yeah. And okay. it's not deep enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. How, how deep does the vernal pool need to be? Well, you need to have enough water, standing water, to allow an egg mass to go through metamorphosis without being accelerated because the water temperature increased too fast. Okay. So it's got to have a certain, certain volume to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's okay. not enough shade here to keep no, no, the temperature okay. down. It, uh, it's chucker block full of stuff right. in there, whether yeah. it's yeah. dead or living, yeah. it's yeah. chucker block full. Yeah. Yeah. There's no open water and it's not, there's no area where I would say any of the water would be deeper than six inches above the soil surface. Okay. My, my at or near the surface. So there's no availability to support any kind of primary or secondary species. Well, my guess is that, that any picture windows aren't looking out on the wetland, probably. Well, I think honestly, with, 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 nice. with, 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 with the garden and with the rain yep. garden yep. and the plantings being proposed, they are all flowering species. Yeah, so you are good. going to attract your migratory birds. You're yeah. going to attract your butterflies. You're going to attract your bumblebees. So you can easily put a bird feeder out there and attract even more yeah. wildlife and backyard and, animals. And just just so you know, the, the, the house is going to face south. So it would be facing south. So it would be a great, mm -hmm. great spot for passive solar windows yeah. and maybe, you know, solar panels oh, on top okay. of the house. Yeah, and, right, yeah. and it would, it would, it would, it would. So no, it would, no sides looking in somebody's backyard. No, you'd be looking out sideways. Right. Can I ask, and I see this project here, and this is just a question I'm curious about if you're dealing in Southtown. How many more of these marginal lots do you think are left in Southtown? That's an unfair question because we cannot answer that. Yeah, okay, and I just, I'm just curious. Well, and for some reason, we seem to have found them. Uh, uh, we and, uh, and found the most recent two. Uh, and uh, and uh, but I don't know that I, there's not a lot of lots left there. Um, Just I curious, no big deal. In fact, the, the the subdivisions that she's talking about, they had to make those lots because there really wasn't any more mm. flat lots. These these lots, the, the one on Drummer Trail and this one, are kind of like slipped through the crack kind of lots. Mm. And, And being that everything was designed in the 1980s, it was designed with the setbacks that were right in place then. Now, oh. the building 39 feet away, have those people been informed or not? No, they will be, right. they will be informed of the ZBA and the planning board process. A letter of and they will come. Oh, yeah, I oh. would. <laughs> no, but what I'm trying to say is, so there you are. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to let somebody, you know, have their constitutional right to life, liberty, and property and protect the wetland and have a house? Or do you want to tell the condo people that, you know, 30, 
the, the side setback is 39 feet and your building is actually 39 feet. So your setback is the same. And by the way, your water happens to be going in there and you don't have an easement to put it there. <laughs> But those are not your trials or tribulations. I that's the, that's that. up to the ZBA to make that balancing act. They have and to decide. Here we go. They yep. have to Again. decide. <laughs> they have to decide. You know, if this particular property with its disabilities and its limited ability to be developed, and and a good plan to preserve the wetlands and and have a modest home there, uh, is well? is is outweighed by the abutters' concerns or something, and that's their job, and that's what they need to do. And if they deny it, then I assure you the owner will probably be going after his back tax, back buildable taxes, because it's being taxed as no a buildable threat. lot. No threats. <laughs> That's it's the truth. It's okay with us. You're, well, you're asking a lot of speculative questions that are not in your purview. <laughs> But we can ask them. You can ask them. <laughs> you, you, and we you don't. May, you and the more, and the more knowledge no, no, we have, I mean, the better the, we can make. The, 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 the thing of it is, is that um, uh, uh, we all know uh, that there's a, a gut reaction of not in my backyard, commonly known as NIMBY. And nobody wants anything in their backyard. It really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, and uh, we're trying to make a logical well thought out proposal that preserves the wetlands, preserves the intent of the wetlands ordinance, and, and doesn't do any damage to the wetlands, and in fact, uh, honors the, the wetlands buffer as best, as best we can while allowing development of the property. And that's our argument. And we will, we will, we're asking your help to tell us what your thoughts are. Thank you very much for your thoughts. And speculating, the neighbors could be very excited to have a new one, a new one for Canasta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the, the one question I have is, um, when they're doing excavation here, even though it would be minimal given that they're gonna put a crawl space in, they're gonna put a foundation in, where, where, would, where would they put the soil? Or can we specify where the soil can be put? The soil can be easily trucked off site just with any kind of wetland restoration project where there's no available room for stockpiling or for storage. It could probably the only be in time the, we would in the put proposed driveway area. Mm -hmm. Is for dewatering purposes. Again, I'm speaking out of a wetland restoration mindset. So you're talking about putting it over here? No, I'm talking about putting it in the driveway temporarily. Yeah, here. And then you truck it out. Would the rain garden be an, an after okay. construction? Okay. Uh, it was, addition it, or would it be put in before uh, the uh, no yeah. all Honestly, sediment there's and not that much material to be moved yeah. all sediment and erosion control devices will be installed prior to any, any kind any of construction, construction. Yeah. Yeah. but the rain garden would be a final construction final activity construction. Yeah. being yeah. that it's you know yeah. Yeah. a little yeah. more delicate but the log's going to be there yeah the, the well we can easily put choir logs or silt silt sock these are temporary sediment and erosion control devices during the construction oh, and, 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 and clearing of the property and prepping the property, prepping the property anyway, for the house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're talking about putting the choir logs along this. I wouldn't this. put the choir log in during construction of the let, home. Let me finish, let me finish my question. You're talking about when you put the choir logs in, you're going to put them in the, the perimeter of this cross-hatched area, is that right? me again so this is the cross hatch area so you're going to put your choir logs in during construction of the home we will put silt sock on the upper edge of the proposed rain garden because that's a temporary sediment and erosion control device okay. upon this being more kind of what they call weather tight that temporary sediment and erosion control device can be removed and the preparations for the rain garden can be, so we can certainly set up a construction sequence doing phases. Okay, we, we want them along here. Okay. And we want them, um, so if you're, okay, so we would want them around the perimeter of the well, area. We want them down, down here. here. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and make sure you take, get that plan back to the city so you can make those. It's a lot of pink, though. Yeah, <laughs> no. 
And this okay, is, but you know what the pink is. I do. This yeah. is going down grade, correct? It is. So there's, there's, a, nothing's, there's a slight slope. Nothing's going to go flow this way? No. Okay. Which is why this would be a yeah. good area for stockpile or have it trucked off site. Okay. And you have your list of all your native plants, which is great. Okay, so you're going to put. I do. Okay. So when you put. Is it um, Silt top. Know, you might silt, you're gonna, silt top. So that's what we want. And we don't want. We don't want silt top as a temporary. Grass. Right. Wire log Maybe being a permanent. Okay, let me finish. Let me finish. I, I know, but I, I'm trying to explain the difference. So I, I know what the difference is. Okay. The silt, we want Maybe silt too. socks, not silt okay. fence. It's really the best way to keep everything. You can. In the I would do a. Com you could do a combination right, of. Yes. Imagining we the We want at least silt right socks. No, no, the grass. Silt fence. Unfortunately, I do put on a sediment erosion control plan and with that, silt sock um, okay. because yeah, nine times out of ten, the contractors uh, never the install the silt fence. Yes, I'll put that right. In. Okay. All right. That's fine. Good. That's fine. That's fine. And 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 that's the uh, that's uh, again that's just the experience. harsh truth. Right. It never gets installed properly. Okay. All right. It just stinks because we have such icy winters when they try and figure out how to. Get rid of ice in their driveway. They can't. Using little bit salt of salt, a little bit over terrible. the snow bank. You know, I, I don't mean to. Yeah, you do. It's a, a lot of the folks that might be living there or may be someplace where it's warmer in the winter time. The um, okay. Okay. It's a miracle we have in our. <laughs> okay, so does anybody have any additional comments or questions or Taylor, do you do you make those into Yeah, well I was just gonna I just before we end, I just wanna clarify Thanks, Jeff. the comments that we're providing to go forward. So um, I will talk with the planning office about head facing maintenance. Wait a minute. I wanna listen. Oh, so I'm gonna talk to the office about who and how we can enforce the head spacing being maintained. Um, and then for deed restrictions, we have no wetland filling, no accessory structures, um, something, some language that will identify that the rain garden cannot be changed, and or snow filled in, or filled in, or mowed, or mowed, mowed, <laughs> mowed, mowed. mowed. Okay. <laughs> and that uh, snow will not be stored in wetlands from the driveway. Does oh, that sound like it. Yes, and, and one more thing: about? the limits on the chemicals for the grass around the house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We were going to put that as part of the deed to get with yeah. it. Yeah, I saw that listed. Okay, so the other question is, we have dead trees here. What do we want to do about the dead trees? Mother Nature will take care of them. Well, I know that, but you know, some people are not patient enough. You know that Mother Nature takes too long. Are these? They look like they're significant trees. So we put are, these on the dead trees. are they? Are the homeowners going to want to remove those because they're quote unquote unsightly? Okay, I so this is a slippery slope, okay. and I don't want to pigeonhole myself, but we could request a one-year follow-up monitoring event for the mm. rain garden, and that would at least get me on the property where I could greet and broach the current homeowner. Oh. Okay, so because I, they, they they wouldn't be allowed to encroach on the wetland to remove the. Uh, uh, but no, Dean makes a good point. People will go in there with their galoshes and start whacking stuff. Yeah, uh, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I can see it happening, which is why it's a slippery slope. Be, yeah. But a, a follow-up monitoring event would be a non-invasive way to get a handle on how things are. Later. Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit of education and <laughs> along with it. So, so I was I was asking about the trees because there are you know there are ways that they could go in with a cherry picker and cut the trees and take them away. Well, how big are the trees? There can't, there just can't be anything big in there. There, a cherry picker wouldn't go in there, but. Um, there, there is, there is some dieback, and I do recall that. And I don't know how to.
best answer your inquiry where it is not confining to somebody that's the decision maker. That's okay. not me. So, uh, and, and my, okay, so I'm, I'm asking the question of the commission to see if how people feel about I mean, they with the ground being frozen, they could go in right now and cut down those trees. But that's do, do we want part of to our list saying that they can't touch the wetlands. Right, but well, the trees aren't the well. First of all, if you were to file a forestry notice of intent, intent to cut. Oh my God! You are allowed to go into a wetland during winter months. That's mm -hmm. right. You don't that need to point. file an NOI for this little lot that's not even an acre in size. Yeah, point five eight. But during winter months is the safest time to do it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. exactly my point. So my question to the commission is how do we feel about allowing them to go in and do that cutting during the winter? What's the point? Second, how old are they going to get in there and what do they need to do it me? for? <laughs> well, under current... New Hampshire DES administrative rules, chapter 300, that has literally just been revamped again. Mm -hmm. Latest publication date of March 2021. But it's been going, it, this particular rule I'm about to cite has not changed since early 2000s when the first time I ever read it. You are allowed to go into a wetland using hand tools to, con, to manipulate, to, to cut, to maintain, to remove dieback, to remove dead, because your overall intent is for the health and integrity of the vegetation and the system. You're allowed to do it with hand tools. That includes a chainsaw. <laughs> You're not allowed to go in with an excavator. So you can't put a restriction on something that is under an RSA that people are allowed to do. I think my civics is from like ninth grade in high school <laughs> that our rules and regulations can be more stringent. They can't be less stringent than the states. That's not what, that's. You don't have any regulation right now in regards to anything Jess, that's Jess, I'm not, I'm not here to debate this with you. I I'm here to ask a question of the commission, how we feel about them going in and doing this. Well, I think if you look at the photos, um, he, he, the photos, it's really kind of overgrown and scraggly and just going to the way she explained that for the health of the wetland, it would be, you know, some of the trees that are down sideways to go in during the winter months with a chainsaw and hand tools and get some of that wood out of there would probably be good for the wetland. And that's already allowed. I propose during development of this lot before the Vizinas sell it to allow some removal of dead and hazardous trees inside the boundary while I am still a part of this team. Right. And we can and, put in we can put in once it becomes somebody else's property, I go back to if you're gonna Try and regulate it. You know, I would do a follow-up monitoring event that is transferable once the property is sold. Okay. But so allow me to help facilitate and monitor a wetland enhancement, including the removal of the hazardous and dead trees. So you have to leave the roots, though, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't be stumped. We're just it's removing some of the dead standing snags because uh, can I can I ask if these all of them because I wouldn't t take them all out right well they're not gonna want them gone too much because then they'll see their neighbor's pool right <laughs> I agree which neighbor's pool the first one or the second one either of them <laughs> what, what but is taking it out some of the extra material what? does improve the health of the system yeah yeah and your concern is the quality and health of the weapon yeah, right can I get a sense of whether these are 75 year old pines they're or 25 no. year old black locust. No, they're, they're more like, like just, you know, seven to 10 year old brush sticks. Right? So this is a kind of a good, I pretty low, low grade. Being 
fruit. Stop. They're not mm. big. Birch, <laughs> yellow, a lot of the yellow birch. birch. Well, this is what the it the trees look like. And this. as we all know, I think the lot was cleared at one point. Yeah, I see. Exactly. You know, right. Good. My forestry professor said birch are mm. the rock and rollers of the trees. They grow fast and die young. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so you know, back to, back to this point. How do we do we want to allow the homeowner to remove this, or do we want to put it in the stipulation so that they can't? Well, are you? Do they even want to? Right. It's not even owned yet. Right. No. no <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just, just let us talk about it. Mike. I think that what we're looking at here is they're concentrating on building a um, modest house on um, what available land is left. To get into what could happen in the middle of the wetlands is a little far for me to get. Given that they've um, acquiesced on placing yet another building um, on the remaining small parcel of upland, I can see that they're really trying to do a good job with this. Once again, I, you are looking at um, elevational lines here, and it is fairly flat. I don't know. As long as we have cover, I, it's a little much for me to go into the middle of the lot. I'm fine with it. I mean, fine with <laughs> with if they need to clean it up a little bit. That's fine. As long as they're not taking out roots and stuff. But, but the energy is going to be put into it's building not, a building. I mean, that's not a down the road yeah. so far. <laughs> what do you think, Bob? I don't. I don't have a problem with. Yeah. Okay. So. So you we know, can basically what it seems to me what happens in the middle of the of the wetlands is is really beyond the the, uh, the scope. particular scope of this this it project. Is. Well, I, I think Dean's got a point though because you know we're here because it's your job to uh, conservation commission to conserve the wetland, and 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 so what he's saying is, are we conserving the wetland better by allowing some maintenance of the wetland to get some of this wood out of it so that it thrives yeah, and is more yeah. healthy. I think that's, <coughs> I don't mean to be putting words in your mouth, but I think that's where you're coming from to make the wetland better. Well, I'm looking at it more from the standpoint of if I was the homeowner yep. and I wanted to have a view out the back of my my southern window. You wouldn't want to look out at a hurricane. I wouldn't want to so. look at that. Yeah. And, you know, it may enhance the wetlands going through succession faster. I don't know. I don't know. Depends would, upon how your uh, would, canasta would, playing neighbor looks in her pool. Would you Would you agree with Jessica's uh, idea that she has a um, she has a she monitors and is allowed to go in during construction and when the lot's being cleared to take out some of the the dead wood with her monitoring there. Uh, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Well, that well, what, what would what would be the, the time of the year that the construction would be going on? So. Well, uh, you know. Because if it's if it's not during hopefully frozen it's, ground hopefully time, it's, it's not supposed hopefully to be it's in, in there. The, hopefully it's in the summer and August and September when it might be dry. Yeah. I know it's been a few years, but there's nothing out there that is over. 15 inches in oh, diameter. Oh, yeah. And even that, I think I might be giving the system a little more yeah. than it's. You're, you're not seeing high quality not. wood in there. You're, no. you're no. seeing no, it's, again, it's, brush. It's yellow birch, it's, it's gray birch, it's, I recall some spruces. I certainly recall hemlock and pine yeah. and a lot well, of grasses very big. and sedges. Yeah. Okay, so. How is the planning board going to, if we say it's okay to follow the DES rules and regulations to go in there with hand tools during the winter, 
to remove this dead vegetation, it's not these dead trees. No, no, I know that. I know that. But how it's now? They would say that that is your purview, not. But the planning board will not have a problem with it. They would have had a problem with the shed. Right. But we've eliminated that. So. Okay. Okay. So. I think once you start writing language like that in there, you're almost encouraging the picking of the wound, you know. Are you, are you like staying out of it with the energy into building the building? I agree. There, there's no, but he's, he's you get, and you, you're still. He's, he's right. People sitting out on their porch looking out saying, hmm, wonder if that would be, if we can get rid of that. I wonder how we can get rid of that. Right. And the, it's a good well point. Personally, I would leave it because woodpeckers like the dead trees. Uh, yeah. And I like woodpeckers, so I would. <laughs> I would, I would <laughs> too. Honestly, and I don't want to live in a fishbowl. Uh, but uh, this is proves that these comments, while valid, are a lot of speculation, and it they're yeah. open ended. No, no, well, we want to be. It's hard to we, find. We want to be clear. We want to be clear, and you're right. And it looks like we've given this some serious thought. We've, we've looked at the photos. The photos show a lot of trees that are crossed and down. The photos, so we have this monitoring program. So when we clear the lot, we're going to be able to take some of those things down. But that doesn't mean that the, the, the homeowner shouldn't be able to follow state regulations. And if they want to clear it in the, in the winter time, they can, with hand tools and a chainsaw, they can. Right. And, 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 that's, and that's basically post-construction time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and have... Jessica, go in and monitor to make sure they're doing it according to uh, in the construction phase. Yeah, exactly. That's correct. Right. It. What about uh, uh, going back and checking the choir log and stuff after it's been built, whatever it is on transfer there? Do you go back, or mm -hmm. then we're putting maintenance on Jess here? But I trust I trust her to do it, and she knows well, that, what she's proposing to do. That's also the building official's job. You've got to make sure that all the plans have been. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because it's not the kind of inspection that the city would do. No. If you, if you, uh, if you would like an addition, uh, like a follow up, follow up, kind of like one year after the rain garden, much like a wetland restoration or any kind of wetland enhancement project or anything, where. A scientist would go in and review, make sure all of the plants that were planted have become established. If any of those plants need to be removed and replaced because they just didn't quite take root this, yet. Th this could be part of an as-built plan that's required report. by yep. the planning board, too. Yep. You know? I, I can see that right as there. As part of the CUP. And, and, and I think the other part of it is that um, if Jessica uh, could write a, you know, a report. report right that shows that so and it, and that would be like a one to two page synopsis of what went well if everything is going well or if there's any thought you know recommendation and where, and where does that get filed here with goes into the file for the property yeah i would get a copy and i'd put it in the property file and have it on record and we would be telling the zba planning board what your suggestions are so right. we would have that report on that perfect what do you guys think okay so uh, what do I we like have your picture yeah what do we have taylor you want me to run through those again yes please okay. and one of the things we need to talk about is the sign yeah i mean they, they've suggested signage deb already she really wanted me to add the no cut right she she right. liked right. that yeah. and right. so I'll have yeah right melody or or my or whatever I'll have her <laughs> add okay. the no cut to it good that's good okay so aside from you know having the uh, signage there we'd ask for the I'll follow up on the catch basin maintenance with the department um, deed restrict restrictions will include no wetland filling no accessory structures uh, language that identifies the restrictions with the rain garden, um, snow removal restrictions, and chemical uh, fertilizer restrictions for the lot. Wow. 
and, and we're going to we're going to put in and the requirement for the maintenance check on the report. Right, and we're going to put in that the trees, the the dead trees, can be removed. Per the city and state the, RSA show. Right, we're using hand tools. Okay. Yes. And you know probably. Can she? Which I mean, includes chainsaws. Dogs. Right, hand tools. But, okay. but okay. can we also have it during the, the the process of clearing the lot? We can take out or the what end. we can reach from that point because remember she was going to monitor that mm -hmm. yeah. is that I want that to be part of it if yeah. that's okay possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that if 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 they want to go in they want to go in next week and I know that's not possible but if they want to <laughs> go in next week and they want to cut during the winter to remove the debris quote unquote debris dead trees that it be done with um, Jessica's oversight yeah right and and I can certainly leave some because I think there's absolutely value in some, and we can we can well, make it a nice, healthy. Cut. I, I would leave it to your your judgment. Right. <laughs> Did you put something like that in, Taylor? Yep, I I'll write up a summary of all these and send it to the commission, you guys, and. Um, well, thank you so much for all your time. No, thank tonight. you. Thank you. you know, this is trying good. to make it a sensitive project, yeah. something reasonable and modest, but also uh, allow the use of the lot as a, for what it was intended for. Right. right. And we appreciate the work that you've done. So thank you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you so you. much. Have a wonderful right. evening. Yeah, you too. Hey, Jess, just before you go, could you let us know where you get these? I can. Just, you know, tell Taylor where you get them so I'll, that I'll if we... I'll send you the same email that I got from Alton. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So, that, yeah, because it, it took much, me... How much they cost a piece at a run of 100 Um, I think a, a batch of 100 I think, is a $300. Okay. It's actually the most reasonable thing I found. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Good. So if but you it's a woman-owned company. <laughs> okay. So, so if you could tell us, tell tell us where you're getting them too, please. I will. I I, I will send that email to Taylor because I searched high and low. I sent an email to Lisa saying where do you get them. She didn't find anything, and that's when we remember. I remembered about the box in the shed. Okay. So the other thing is send that email to Lisa also. For obvious reasons, thank you. Thank you, guys. Have thank you nice very much. <laughs> on a, Bye. Bye. On a side note to the signage, I actually did just have new signs made that are not specific to ATVs because that's what the ones that we had were. They're not the circular ones because, like she said, I for the life of me could not find somebody who makes these anymore. Um, it's it's a five by seven yellow sign. It just says I, I can, I'll send a picture of it in the follow up emails. Um, but it says, uh, you know, protected natural area, no disturbance, no ground disturbance allowed, enforced by city of Latonia. There's no motorized vehicles, is that what you're saying? Um, we have ones that say no motorized vehicles, that those are the small medallion yep. ones, but these are the a five by seven square yep. tin thing. Um, we got 25, the intention was to just have them as, if we need it for our properties, as well as, you know, showing, like that's exactly what we did, we showed them what we made and said, you know, we would really like it if you put something like this on the property. And Perfect. They can match it up. So I'll bring some of those to the next meeting, but I'll okay. send a picture out too. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Circles, too much wasted material. <laughs> Rectangles, no wasted material. What? Seriously. I don't know. I think the circles stand out more. I like them. Oh, I know. But I, I was aiming for the circles, but it, I'm so hard to find them. I guess. <laughs> Back to trigonometry now, I want to know. <laughs> I guess I found a new job I can do after I retire. There you go. <laughs> You can make circles out of squares. I'm going to make a little signage. <laughs> okay. It's always been a round peg in a square hole type of situation for me. <laughs> it's going to be the first thing they rip off. Right. Well, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's not something I would want to look at. <laughs> okay, so let's do, let's do the, the minutes from uh, January 19th, 2022. Anybody have a... Chance to read them and in. 
comment. to me yeah. oh Dean as a ma matter of procedure as a as an alternative uh, at what point uh, would I be called upon to vote on any motion I, I would like you to vote on all and okay. if, if we have you know okay. like in this case like this we have a quorum yeah, yeah but right. if you vote you know yeah. I would I value your input so I would okay. like you to vote sure. fine with me Move to accept the minutes. Yeah, I'll second that. Any any comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I have one, sorry, okay. under, oh my gosh, other business. Okay. Um, under, one, two, three, the third paragraph from the bottom of item number 10. Okay. Third third line down from that might be able zero balance is that supposed to be z e r o see over on the far right I hand side i think that meant to say two might be able really? to balance okay yeah i'll, I'll edit that okay good call okay thank you okay so now we come to the feedback on the NRI. Did people have a chance to read it and comment? Are we looking specifically at 43 to 47? Yeah, I would just prefer, well, I mean, if you have comments on anything, I'll take it, but um, a focus on the recommendations just to make sure that I'm on the will likely be what's driving the master plan as well. Yep. Deb, do you have anything? Um, I thought it looked great. Um, I definitely think we need to designate some scenic roads. Designate some scenic roads in Laconia. I mean, but that's one of the recommendations, so that's perfect. Um, I liked the aquifer protection, the invasive species inventory. I mean, that stuff is important. Um, is there a section in here that talks about protection of the environment during construction? No, um, not in the NRI, but that could be something like a page of focus in the 
half the time that I had him. Two friends were interested in that, like maybe it's based on well, I mean, natural it, resource and development concerns. Yeah, I mean, even if it were just a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. That. Um, you know, all contractors be aware that they are to, you know, and, and I would go so far all right. with, I'm sorry, go ahead. just to, because of storm runoff and as many storms as we're getting nowadays, I'm, on, I'm to the point where I would love to see silt socks around the four sides, four, the whole perimeter of a project. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a steep slope, you know, unless it's yeah. a slope where it's definitely running. Um, the situation on Opeachy Street just grates me yeah. terribly. I will be working on how to add some language to the demo permits in light of that whole situation. Um, penalties, I mean, they need to know that there's gonna be penalties. Yeah. I mean, we could add to our coffers. Um, and, okay, but we're talking about this. We'll talk about that, something else later. But um, yeah, I think that would, it would be nice to have that added as a, um, requ you know, request or whatever. So some type of recommendation language about how construction contractors should be operating with natural resources or would you like a recommendation that says the city will update documents to ensure that these things will be followed? I think as a recommendation okay. that during new construction, during any kind of construction that contractors be aware of the delicate environment around them. Okay. That's a long word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little bit vague, but. I know, I know. Well, maybe what I'm thinking is I could. We can get more specific than what we. Yeah, 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 what I'm kind of thinking is I could draft a letter that when a project comes in in the Shoreline Protection District or has wetlands or a vernal pool, I could draft a letter that gets sent to the contractor saying, this project you're about to start in next spring is in, has environmentally sensitive conditions. This is what we expect of you from the city. I mean, they're supposed to understand that from the process, but I know for certain I do not get notified every time a project starts. For example, Opeachy Street, I drove by to go to lunch and I saw that and I was like, all right, that's on my to-do list when I turn around, so. Well, I'll get that one off. But I mean, when you think that we all live in a watershed, I'm, I'm not, I'm thinking all construction, not just on the water or in the wetland or anything. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a good precedent, especially when you, you know, these days when you don't know what's happened on that property beforehand, you don't know if there's any kind of pollution or dumping that went on, just to contain it. Okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Here we're looking at view shed protection an expansion of the RR2 zone. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this work with the overlay here? We mentioned Roller Coaster Road. When I get deep into some of uh, our city uh, plans, it talks about setbacks on Route 3 and Roller Coaster Road for expansion of the road. Mm -hmm. I worry in some ways that the setback for RR2 is what, 75 feet from the road? I believe so. Right, how, uh, yeah. it, I would ask, is it necessary or would it uh, somehow inhibit development? And once again, I'd have to relook at the overlay as to what the proposed expanded setback is for like roller coaster. Okay. But I can see certainly as, you know, Hilliard, as you're building in there, once again, on the north side of that, you have a lot of uh, stuff in the rice, you know, 300 acres there, whatever it is. 
and you won't be seeing development in there. I don't necessarily think that 75 foot setback would inhibit uh, development there. But once again, all at the same time, they want the density and more and more and more. And so I'm just trying to figure out where the balance is in there. So do you think it would be better to? I don't know. I just I, I I would like I'd like to go back and look at the overlay off the roller coaster, 75 foot setback for um, roadside development, and what the uh, expanded uh, plan for that road might be. I mean, if they put in a four lane road, I don't know what it is. I I I know I looked at it before. But it's certainly a strong setback from Route 3. We're not seeing development right on that. But mm -hmm. how, how does that all work? I mean, that's the point I want to my question. Okay. Bob, do you have any, do you have any comments on 43 to 47? Oh, uh, not particularly, no. Okay. Stacy. Um, no, it's fine. Speak now. No, it's fine. Come on, you're thinking about it. I know you're thinking about it. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> because the car is downstream, uh, the proposition is in front of me. Okay. That's all. I can read you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I got you. Yeah. And on your flood mitigation, anticipate this to change. You get an extra yeah, I, scene there. I, yeah, I just plan on... Um, oh, I thought that was your note. Yeah, that's just my note. I forgot to take right. it out when I sent it to you guys. I'm just planning on rewording that section so that it encompasses all of the climate change right. recommendations we want to put in, not just flooding concerns. So. Okay, well, I have... So one of the things on 43 wetlands and vernal pool protection, I would like us to put on a map vernal pools that are identified either by us or by, um, like Jessica identified vernal pools for, uh, I don't know why I can't remember his name, but for, uh, yeah, <laughs> home sees property. When we when we do that identification, put it on a map so that we have we know the locations. So I can do that in the office. Mm -hmm. um, GIS on the computer only gets updated once a year. The like the zoning maps and all that. So it wouldn't be continually updated, but we could have our own database that like if you had a question, I can send you a picture of the new map or something like that. Okay. And just for reference, page 51 does have the current vernal pools that we have, um, you can see the little red dots. It's certainly not all of them. I don't even have homesies on there because this is based off the data that's in the GIS right now, that the vernal pool data, so. <coughs> but as we see more come through, I can yeah. add that as like a little pinpoint on these maps. Okay, just so that we can keep track of all of them, you know? Okay. Yeah, um, just by the way, I, I noticed that there are some small pocket areas there at, at, on the Taylor community. Okay. That, uh, uh, pond water from, from uh, in the spring, but uh, I doubt if they would meet the uh, uh, require the definition of a of an actual vernal pool. And you know, I think that that's a very good point. Mm. And, and, and so my question is, are there any employees of the city that are certified wetland scientists? I know that um, Luke Powell was, but he's no longer with the city. So what do we have to do to get a consultant to go and look at what Bob's talking about and I don't know all the details, but I my first assumption would be that because it's a private property, 
it has to be contracted by the, the owner of the property. I don't think the city yeah. can say we want to burn up full in- inventory of all the private land here. Yeah. I don't know if that's for certain. That's my initial thought is that's how that would play <coughs> out. Yeah. Okay, so what do we have to do to get that process? Could we have to write a letter to the Taylor Community Board saying we're concerned that you have That could be an pool? option, yes. Um, you know, a notification saying we... And they, they do have four large, well, I guess you'd call them uh, stormwater impoundment areas. Right. But I doubt if they would, they would be considered a, a vernal pool. Mm-hmm. They, they have uh, water coming in. Right. And I suspect they may be fairly. Is that <laughs> about where Taylor Horn is? What? Because it doesn't PG. Okay, so. Oh, you mean Taylor Community? Yeah. It's in this this area here. So yeah. maybe that's. What what do you? Uh, this is a vernal pool. Oh, that's a vernal. That's already been. Okay. Well, yeah, that would be. In, uh, so that could be. That would. Probably, well, I have probably haven't been there because it's it's off away from the the building. Build up area. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell the street, but that, yeah. okay. that's pretty close to where. Yeah. I, my thought, though, is just. Yeah. I don't know. We can well, write a letter like uh, that. I just pockets don't know are if the city by the uh, uh, a homeowner's uh, roadways yeah. mm-hmm. to pay for that. And no. In no. Must some cases, it were the, the man-made, but the now. The right. form yeah. the, the pocket that uh, uh, ponds water in the spring. Right. Okay, so I had d- another question. Okay. Prime wetland designation. And my question is, how does the planning department feel about it, and how does the city council feel about it? So, I don't necessarily think the planning department will have anything against it if we were looking at designating like the one-year pickle pond. I, I don't have... I'm not sure how city council looks at it. I know they, from what I've heard, that in the past they weren't supportive of it because of restrictions that it could limit things. Um, I get the indication that with some of the dimensional changes that they're considering, we will be fighting for some green space in the future. So if we could designate something, I definitely think that would be a good idea. Mm. It's awful. What is? <laughs> I'm not well. referring to the planning board conversation. Last time is that I. Yeah. What? Is, what's the planning That's board? That's what you're referring to, right? Yeah. 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 What's the planning board's position? She's gonna tell us when we come back when we get to her spot. <laughs> it know? seems like I'm the only one that doesn't want somebody right on top of me. I there. More. The, the he wants to upzone everything across the board. Who's he? Gene. So he's going to get his way because I'm, I feel like I'm the only one arguing. What do you mean by upzone? The sheet that he spoke to you about mm-hmm. last time. Mm-hmm. Green you space. go from 40 to 60. So all those numbers were just magically changed and magically changed to they were there so less green space for each parcel to go from six units per acre to eight units i mean all that stuff went up why is it the city of laconia's issue to solve right. the state's housing issues Sometimes I wonder, sometimes when I sit in these things and wonder about that. There's a webinar on the 17th that is going to talk about um, how is the state doing with housing. And maybe it's not as, I'm guessing. Maybe they're saying it's not as bad as we we think. I don't know. If we're going upscale, why are we not building... A uh, 75 foot tower out here, 125 foot tower yeah. on top of that lame old parking garage. <laughs> okay, so, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because uh, nobody uh, likes tall buildings, apparently. Uh, that's right. Okay. If, you, that's right. if you have access to a uh, Concord Monitor in today's Monitor, there was a, a long article by Dave Brooks 
and talking about the housing problem and building in instead of building out. Right. table that we talked about in the last meeting at the master plan steering committee the last meeting they talked about doing 30 percent for CR residential and it was floated to 20 percent some people started floating that concept so I say that in that it, if oh. it does go to council and planning board in the future I think it would do well to be at the public hearing and board so so wait a minute I, 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 I can, so can the commission space. draft a letter to the city council saying this is? Well, you guys already kind of had your. So, yeah. so right, but, but our but but Dean heard us. But did anybody else hear it? <laughs> I, you know what I mean. I believe we, we could draft a letter and have it be a part of the hearing. Just so that they understand that this this is not what we agreed or thought was a good idea. Okay, so we have the we have the minutes from the meeting on the nineteenth of January, mm -hmm. where we discussed green space, and we said this is what we would agree to. This is what we these are our comments, and since that meeting, these the proposed has been reduced. From that's my understanding. So my, I, my understanding is he brought these proposals that we discussed to the bolt to the. Master Plan Steering Committee, and they discussed it, and then it, they, those some of those numbers shrunk. Okay, so I was the only one that disagreed. So on in. So he asked for our comments. We gave him our comments. Then it was changed, but we're, he's not coming back and talking to us about why those changes that the changes were made and why yeah, they were I, made. I can, I can ask if he can come back to me. He was just yeah. asking our opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, it's like he'll say no. <laughs> he'll say no, not not to come. No, he's already been. He's there. like, I've already been there. <laughs> okay, so good. Then, then you can assure him we will write a letter that will support what we had agreed to. Just so we're on the record. This is what we agreed to. You change things afterwards. How come you didn't come to us and let us know you were changing things? Because you didn't have to. <laughs> well, but that's not the point. We don't play that way. This is live free. Okay. All right. So anybody have any other any other comments on the recommendations on 43 to 47? Because I I'm I told Taylor I marked it up and I'll I'll give her all my comments. And, um, if you could 43 to 47, Taylor, if you could make the revisions in a different color ink and date and put a date on it so that next time we can take a look at it, everybody could see what, what the recommended changes were. Okay. Please. So I could, how about for the next meeting, I intend on adding a finalized version of the document and that will be, you know, final comments, issues, and then I'll address that and we'll just get it posted after that to the city page for like one more round mm -hmm. okay and i'll give you my give you my this draft okay what am i what do i got here okay any other comments on the nri okay so we did race point so that brings us to DES, anything on DES? Um, so yes and no. Um, so Drummer Trail will be back. Um, <laughs> the lot, uh, so Drummer Trail came onto my plate two days into me working here, so I'm not super up to date on the lot. Um, the owners brought in building plans to South Down South Down was like these are not what matches the CUP. You're, they had a, they went to DES and they got approval to fill, I think 199 square feet of the wetland on that property for part of the retaining wall, which was not a part of their CUP. So they are coming back for an amendment. So they will most likely be coming back here for another conversation. I'm thinking our next meeting. He does. He's not part of the project anymore. 
Where's Dumber Trail? Um, it's... It's off... It's near Crimson Drive. It's off of... It's but off it's in Southtown? Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, Southtown. Okay, I'll go looking for it. I'll find it. It's Southtown, I, it, and then it's on the right side. Yeah, actually, if you take uh, Crimson, it's right there at the end of that. Um, so, yeah, that's just a heads Take a up. right and a they right. They will be back. Southtown has already voiced that they want a stormwater management plan study done for the site. Um, but from what I've gathered in the office, that was not part of the conditions of the original CUP, so I don't know if that mm -hmm. would be part of the second CUP. Mm -hmm. um, but they will be back. The new house plan. Okay. Is it one house or more than one house? It's one house. And it's it really the issue is, is simply their CUP did not call for filling any wetlands, but their DES permit gave them permission to fill 199 square feet. Is this the one that they came and it was a, just a big old house on the square? It might be. I think that's what the, the plan looks like. And, but and she, had, she had no movement for any input? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure how the last meeting went. I wasn't. I think I remember this guys now. For that part, but, um, they will be back. So that was my only extra comment. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other business. So, uh, I had a couple things, and it all stems from silt socks and construction. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking maybe I should become a building inspector. I don't know. Maybe we need to help the city keep tabs on some of these projects. I don't understand. I don't understand why we have never saw plans for the condominiums on Opeachy Street. What condominiums on Opeachy? I really don't get this. You mean where the where the old? I bet you it's because they're following the there? same uh, yeah. footprint. So, oh. from my understanding, the reason that we didn't <laughs> see that those plans in the commission is that on the last updates to the boundaries of the Shoreline Protection District, technically that property because of the language is not part of the shoreline protection district obviously we are still enforcing the same erosion control situation because it is still on the water it's just a technicality that it's not part of that so it didn't get reviewed as a pod property and it um, met all the requirements for the state permit so they got their des permit without they all they needed was the city signature from the clerk i mean they cut trees they moved earth around without any silt sock there the foundations are already in mm -hmm. they just poured those i mean were you able to look down and see if there was actual dirt right on the pipe i, I they did put the silt socks finally but yeah i went out <laughs> and i didn't see any disturbance past the snow anywhere but um yeah this then i think you drove by a second time and you saw it and so i contacted them again and they put them out by the end of the day, but they didn't do it as fast as we would have liked for sure. Yeah, it was like two days. They were working there like two days with big machines, with taking down trees, and, and I was like. And rain? Uh, was it raining? No. I don't know if it was raining so. that time. I think we were safe that way, but. Um, I thought I saw silt socks on the upland side that were. They have a silt fence on the upper side, I think. Oh, they have an orange construction yeah. around one of the foundation areas that they were going to do, I think. Yeah. But they have, uh, actually, they put in a silt sock and they've now replaced it with a wood chip burn. So. Uh, I think one of the things that's really Hi. important with that property. It did naturally decay a little better um, and it requires a little less maintenance and removal. They last a bit longer. But on that lot, they should have both. Uh, we can, I can ask the contractor to put silt socks back out. I mean, that, you know, it's straight downhill into that, into the lake right there. And then that goes in the river and that goes everywhere. Um, Come on, before, before we go on to the next, I think it's really important that there be security fence 
given that the, the school age children walk past that both directions. It's true that that lot should probably be yeah. fenced you, pretty well. Are you thinking like a chain link fence up to well, the construction period? Okay. Yeah. At least a construction fence. I mean, they put one on Union Ave and nobody walks by that. Right. That's, that's a good point. Probably to protect their material, actually. <laughs> <laughs> or they run by. <laughs> okay, sorry, Jeff. That's all right. Um, um, I'll contact the owner and ask them if that's something that they can address. We put something up there right now for people walking by. And the house lot on 107 where the house burned down and mm. it was right next to the yeah. creek. I noticed they have three or four tent structures back there where they must be storing their stuff or whatever. But it, go ahead. I was just going to say that a part of their conditions of approval were that they will be moving those. I, they have not yet. They're um, just, it's, it's right next to the stream and I don't think they have any kind of silt sock or anything either. No, they, um, they, they do not. Um, so this is one of the things that I've been noticing lately that I'm trying to think of a way to enforce more. And if anyone has any opinion, I would love to hear it because I'm still thinking about it. Um, there's a, a language in their approvals that say they need to contact me to have a BMP inspection prior to doing anything. I have gotten one out of maybe 20 contact people contacting me about that. And so they poured their foundation for that prior to me knowing Mm. about that so I was not able to go out and say you need to use erosion controls um, so I'm trying to figure out a way that ensures these people are going to come to me and tell me that hey we're going to start construction in uh, two weeks can you check out our erosion controls and make sure that everything's good because that's not being followed right now yeah I think I think it has to be right in the initial form that they fill out that they are going to get penalized that they're going to pay a fine if they don't I think that has to go in front of city council well, uh, no, I mean, right. But I mean, I think that's... In order to do that, to get that ball rolling, because I've questioned Right, that but before. I think that you should then. Because yeah. I always want to find. Yeah. And I found out that there's just... City but it's council really, it's just getting... To it's getting so blatant now. So, I mean... Right. Did anything ever come... Did they ever settle things with that warehouse that they were building by the river? The Winnipesaukee River? The... the Piles of soil are gone. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been under the impression river. that there's some. <laughs> <laughs> there's been some efforts to clean up that property. It's soil moving though. Do they have their silt socks around it? <laughs> uh, well, they've moved the, the. I've been told that they've removed the piles, so I don't think they have it there anymore. But it's still in construction, so uh, this is going to be on my gravestone. Everyone <laughs> uses silt socks. <laughs> we'll put we'll put more around your grave. A little rain guard. Little rain guard. <laughs> you guys got salt. it. Oh, I feel good now. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Watch out, though. Hope you won't. But uh, you know, and and it's true. I mean, like I saw OPG violating that, and I mean, if we all could just even keep our eyes open. And let great, you know. That I would mean, be a great help because I, it is hard for me to have eyes on all the properties, especially because I don't get all the shoreline properties as well. Like I, I see some of their building permits, but not all. I don't understand the science, the reasoning behind that. But um, so if you see a project that you're like, yeah, you should just go check this one out. So we're taking know. photos. <laughs> yeah, let's see you do it now. <laughs> well, well the, on Opeachy Street, I went by like three times, and the one guy like started to stop, and I almost had my window down. I was going to say, where are your silt socks? <laughs> but then I was like, mm, I better not. <laughs> no, but I do find that pretty helpful, because I, I know you guys have called a few times, being like, hey, check this property out. Um, so that's and I, I mean... It's understandable. I mean, the city can't keep eyes on everything. It's also a little tough in the winter because I anticipate that people aren't doing much construction, and then I go down the road and they're doing everything that I thought they weren't doing. So oh, I was that. shocked to see those foundations in. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. How crumbly must that dirt have been? I, 
you know. And like I said, I don't know how many trees they took down, but they took down a bunch. I mean, how is that? Wow. How is that working? They don't need to do the formula because it's not shoreline protection. I don't know. Um, Was I, there something in zoning back in the day where they were doing a little adjustment right in on that corner? On Opeachy Street. That that corner is like a like a lot of like it, it's yeah. been part of the spot. It's been taken out of it. Um, it's currently not in it. It's like maybe the first two pieces of property up from the intersection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can check their DDS permits to see if they were even allowed to cut trees. Um, That's all within. It's technically they shouldn't have, unless they had specific permission from DDS. Okay, so well, the trees are gone. So. It, depen it depends on the size of the tree. So well, they might I, be able true. to be fined. Yeah, that's right. No, but that's you know that's <laughs> you know <laughs> that's 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 great. That's great. They were going to find them. That's not the problem. The problem is we need okay. the trees. Right. So we're going to. I mean. Anyway. Well, you might be able to enforce. Now you need to replant. Maybe. Same size trees that you cut down imported <laughs> well it's just you know it's just a very it's, it's a sensitive area because the you got me fascinated now because if they cut down i remember a couple big oaks or something and yeah yeah and i mean if they cut those down and they already whipped in a set of foundations and what's to say they didn't whip out the oak roots just to give themselves that I mean, space you know, you in could that room barely see that trailer some in the summertime so yeah, I'll look into their permit and see what Interesting. happened there. I didn't consider that. I didn't realize how many trees were on that property. So uh, at what point does the city inspector go and check that? Uh, at, when I did a, a um, an addition on my house, they came and checked the foundation. Mm -hmm. So they check foundation, framing. Insulation. Uh, insulation, electrical. Right. I'm, I'm the only one that looks at erosion stuff, so I typically have something on my radar, and then when, so for instance, like um, when Opeachy was getting started, somebody was like, hey, they just got their building permits, keep an eye, they might be starting. Two weeks later, I drive by, and it's the lots cleared, and I don't, no one told me. But they don't inform the city when they're starting after they've gotten their permits. They call up and say, hey, I need a foundation, inspection when can you come out maybe that needs to change mm. let's change all the rules <laughs> yeah. some, I can research a li some options for that maybe um. okay so I had I had two other things under new business one is remember we talked about the loon preservation society doing a presentation at the mill and us helping with that it's going to be in July I talked to the lady who's the executive director there today it's going to be in July and I don't have the exact date because I asked her this morning for the 7th and I found out this afternoon that the 7th was no longer good for the Loon Preservation Society so now I have to go back and change the date but I will let you know when, when that is the other question I have is Patrick Black. Yep. So Patrick Black is the young man from Antioch who is going to do this project for us. And he has been communicating with Taylor, keeping things on track. So you want to um, give us? The latest update. Yeah, so the latest update, he emailed us today saying um, he's meeting with a professor at his university who works in water storage and watershed, watershed studies and things like <coughs> that um, to get their input on the project. And uh, after that, he'll adjust his little contract and proposed plan and he'll send it along and we can start getting the ball rolling. I think his class has just started, so he's finalizing the contract and then he'll begin working, you know, throughout the semester, so. 
Okay, so what what's the time frame for him to complete? Uh, I'm assuming his semester ends in May, so I would anticipate the full project will be done by then. Um, and then if we are, he was open to doing a presentation to us if we would like. Um, obviously, that would be towards the tail end of the project, but we can schedule that. Maybe do Zoom if he lives in like Maine or in Vermont. So. <laughs> I would vote for him doing it in person, mm -hmm. and if we had to pay for him to stay overnight in a room, that we should um, pay for that. Okay, we can look into that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so that leads to my question about his work. Is it the kind of thing that you think would be valuable for the NRI? Is it, it, it would be under the climate change component. Yeah, I think it would have more implications for the master plan um, than the NRI. I feel like the NRI is a little bit more of just a, here's the layout of what we've got here. Um, whereas I think his project is gonna identify areas to be concerned with for future like zoning and um, monitoring and things like that. Okay. Um, so I think we can, take his, rep his work and incorporate that into the master plan, climate change section, or recommendations and all that. Which, again, that will probably hopefully be wrapping up around the same time as his project, so I can still, that timeline should work out. Great, okay. Okay, anybody else have anything under other business? Okay. Staff report? Or, I'm sorry. Stacy, do you have oh, anything you want? I already uh, squawked. I'm sorry. I already squawked. <laughs> okay, but you have any uh, anything else you want to squawk about? <laughs> no. And this is you know it's you know we're we're in a squawking mood so. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing else. I, I I was very discouraged over <laughs> the whole thing so. I'll just keep squawking. So if you if you need help on squawking, well, I can't go to the meeting on the seventeenth, so I didn't that's, ask. That's the Zoom meeting. That is the Zoom master webinar. plan meeting. So. So maybe, I believe it is public. Maybe you send them a letter, too, and okay. just say. Is that something you want me? To these were our recommendations, just so you know. This is how the Conservation Commission is feeling. Is that something, I guess I just don't know from the perspective of, since I work in the office, is that something I should write or is that something you guys Dear should Dear boss, let me writing? tell you how it goes. Yeah, I'm just wondering, <laughs> is that something you guys would like to draft up and I can spread it um, around? Um, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> I think, um, I think you're right, Taylor. It should come from us. Okay. It should come from us, and um, in person is far more valuable. <clears throat> so the and the, so the if the there's 17th, a meeting on the seventeenth, then okay, I'll we'll give you a spot to present it right there. I'll add that meeting to the follow-up email, like just the date and time and location and all that for you guys. Okay. Six thirty here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and who's, who's? I usually sit there. <laughs> so who who's is it? The planning board. No, it's a representative. The master plan steering committee. Okay. So you have people from ZBA. You have people from conservation commission. You have people from. Um, okay, planning. we just summed up you. No, you have <laughs> people from planning. You have. Um, people from city council, you have the master planner, and sometimes he's laying down where it is that he wants to push the medicine ball, and... And who's, the, who's that person? Dean Sepestin. Okay. The other dean, Dean. So, okay. there's representatives from all those boards. How come we don't have a representative there? Is that what you are? 
Okay. So if you could send Thank me you. a list of people that are going to be there, please. Okay. And um, and then and then it's usually uh, run in conjunction with uh, Peter Brunette, head of planning right now. Okay. He, and so he and uh, Bruce Pepton yeah. go back and forth. And Rob Moore is in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so that our next meeting is the fourteenth. Uh, no, the sixteenth. Ours is at sixteenth. I will bring my letter, our letter, on the sixteenth for your comments, and then. Um, You know what? I mean, you can, if you want to voice it, you might as well voice it now, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Before they leave so that parking lot. Last night, he just presented it to the planning board, and they quickly started to realize that I was the lone dissenting voice, and but there was no vote taken. Okay, so lone dissenting voice, as in these these new green space percentages are too low. Is that what you were saying? So, and I have nothing to fight with because the surrounding towns are so much lower, but it's like comparing but they're not, apples and right. oranges. They're not on the lake, they're not right. resorts. So he brought up Boston last night, and I'm like, no, if I want to live with zero green space, I will go to Boston. <laughs> that, That's just the way it is, but when I come here, I want a little bit of land. Okay, but but your your dissenting voice was based on the percent green space. More the RG zone is what I'm trying to argue for. I I know, but it, it's based on. So density is also what I was arguing about. But the okay. green space, I felt we were doing okay. I mean, if they truly want to pack in more people, then. You've got to shell out the bucks and put infrastructure up north. I mean, there's all Stay that. Stay out of my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> See? Not in my Nimby, backyard. Nimby, Nimby. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. But uh, I'll, bring, I'll bring a dissenting, or I'll bring the, not a dissenting, I'll bring a letter <laughs> with comments on the 16th. And what I'll do is, um, how can I disseminate it and not have it count as a meeting? Think about that so that <laughs> I can, huh? How can you, like, next, next how can meeting? I, how, how can, can I send it to everybody on the commission without it being considered a meeting? Can we just look at it at that meeting? Yeah, we could do that, but I just wanted to give you more time to. Well, we. That's the next one, the next, he'll be presenting on the 16th to us. And then right. On the 17th. But we, we all gave our opinions to Dean, so we're pretty. Right, it is going to be pretty straightforward. Yeah. We're pretty good at, you know, we, we knew what we advised. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. yeah. I just wanted to give you a... Yeah, don't be too wordy. <laughs> You'll lose them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean the way yes. that it. <laughs> You were clear. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so let me see. Let me go back to my Blazed agenda here. Um, <laughs> staff report? Uh, I've said everything I needed to. Oh, everybody was. Okay, <laughs> so we're down to item number 13, Mr. Foote. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, any, any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, you guys are <laughs> Okay, thank you.